But yeah, the way that we can think about the ideology of hippies is that, you know, it's, hippies is, is short or an adaptation from hipsters, um, you know. And again, like all subcultures, it's, you know, most subcultures um, start out as and are initially, you know, start, started by youth, young people. Teenagers, you know, young 20s maybe, okay? But what we have is the hippies in the early 60s, you know, who are teenagers, so born in the mid-40s, who are rejecting this, you know, American dream of their, of their, of their parents. You know, the white picket fence, have a, have a lawn, have a couple cars, you know, a nice lawn, um, you know, go to, go to college, um, you know, have a job, good job, all, all that stuff. Um, so really rejecting the 19 sort of 50s mainstream, you know, maybe y'all will leave it to beaver type um, culture, society, okay? Um, but they really were like opposed to these middle class values of the, of the time that their parents held, um, okay? Um, were anti-war and were also anti-large institutions and mostly cor corporations, anti, anti-government, anti-military, um, etc. And a big part of, you know, of this, which comes from the beat generation, which comes through Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters, is, is you know, hey man, this was a major revolution, man, <laughs> you know, with, the, with your body, um, you know, prior to this, you know, so much of society was structured around uh, religious beliefs of, you know, um, sexuality and the body, that masturbation was wrong, that you know, have sex to have children, um, you know, with a, a husband or wife, okay, um, and this was really about, like, no, like, we're gonna fuck who we want, and how we want, and we're gonna touch ourselves, and we're gonna be naked, and, you know, um, lots of, lots of drugs, 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 buddy, uh, <laughs> um, I love that episode where where Mr. Mr. Mackey um, takes drugs. It's so fucking amazing. Um, you know, uh, another major element was about cultural diversity. Now, some of this was about cultural appropriation, clearly. Um, you know, specifically with like Eastern philosophies and 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 African you know cultures. Um, you know, but uh, at least part of the ideology was accepting, you know, uh, other people and embracing and about equity. And, you know, that was a theory, you know. Um, a major component, too, was like, let's get back to the earth. Like, let's stop relying on companies. Let's stop relying on others. Let's, you know, make a little fucking hippie commune and... You know, I love I love how uh, it's explained in Die Hippie Die. You know, like uh, someone who you know makes bread. Well, that's a baker. Someone who like watches over people, makes sure they're safe. Well, that's a policeman. You know, uh, you know where the, the the hippies are talking about that. But um, you know, the back to the earth is really just a movement about like self sufficiency, off the grid living, communal communal living. Um, you know, but yeah, major element of community togetherness. Um, you know, as opposed to individuality, um, you know, and, um, you know, major social revolution too, class revolution. Um, you know, again, most hippies, most, and be very stereotypical, most come from privileged, you know, middle class back, backgrounds, okay? Um, but they had a huge influence, and I, I think it's, it's hard to kind of see this, this now, but, um, you know, really music, styles, styles of music, psych psychedelic rock, um, you know, progressive rock. I mean, a, a lot of, like, uh, musical, like, fusion kind of comes from, like, um, you know, hippie culture, um, art, 
you know, literature, all that stuff, they had a major influence on, um, on that. I mean, a lot of what, like, Hunter S. Thompson did, a lot of what, like, the books that Ken Kesey wrote, a lot of the books that they, you know, that these people were creating became sort of biblical hippie doctrines, so to speak. Um, they also saw that, you know, you had a liberty, a self-liberty, an individual right, the sun is popping in, um, you know, to express yourself via style. And, and, and you could do that however, however you wanted. And that's a pretty interesting point, um, you know. And, and this whole thing, like, took off and, and went global. For better or worse, right? You have hippies all over the world. Um, but then, you know, just like anything, right? The music. I mean, you look at, like, the fucking music. Like, Jefferson Airplane, Jimi Hendrix. Um, you know, all, all, all that all that stuff. You know, really pretty rad, like, rock rock music that really came out of out of that that era and the, that that culture that went on to be highly influential um you know eventually that shit all gets incorporated into the mainstream it becomes mainstream you see you have these companies that see the style the lifestyle the music the dress all that and they see large youth markets and they figure out how to how to basically commodify it how to turn it into something that's easy for the mainstream to to consume and and you see this i mean like so much of like the the hippie the hippie culture um is bought and resold to us i mean like weed just think about that like that largely comes marijuana cannabis largely comes you know from the hippies who made it like a very prominent thing, a very normal thing to, you know, to smoke, smoke grass, man. <laughs> um, but I think that's important. And, you know, you just see it in so many, so many shapes and forms today that you would maybe not recognize as something hippie, like, like even like yoga and anything that sort of kind of comes from like Eastern cultures um, that's pretty mainstream now. A lot of that was embraced initially by, expo maybe exploited by, appropriated by um, hippies. But it does, you know, this, the hippie views, the hippie culture does live on through, you know, stalwarts, you know, um, who are like OG hippies who are not letting it go. You know, you know, the, you know, uh, an OG, an OG hippie who's not like gone on to become like a, you know, a super rich hippie or even so you know you can always tell because a lot of them have like really bad teeth because they didn't believe in like taking care of themselves and going to doctors and their teeth and stuff <laughs> and they'll, they'll they'll be they'll be pretty unhealthy because they you know um in general like i'm being very stereotypical but i know a bunch of old og hippies who who, who are pretty pretty frumpled um, because they never really took care of their 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 aging bodies, so so to speak. But the stalwarts, the people who won't let it go, uh, who's been living that dream forever. And then obviously we have, um, you know, the lifestyle hippies, the hippies you see on college campuses. A lot of the hippies you see around Eugene, aka a lot of people call them trustafarians, you know, um, etc. 